Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today, we're going to be answering your political questions that you've asked for me to ask my spirit guides. So I will just say from the outset that I have had one doozy of a Mercury retrograde. I've done some good things, new background, moved a lot of furniture around. This is a work in progress, so it's probably going to change the next time you see it. But also, pretty much every electronic device that I own has gone haywire. So hopefully this will actually record and you'll see this video. Um, and may the force be with you in your own Mercury retrograde life, however that is appearing for you. All right, so today we're going to talk about politics. My God, what is not going on? Basically, everything is going on. Um, Trump's attorneys were seen leaving D.C. yesterday. The uh, appeals court threw Trump's special master request back to the special master. Deary seems to want to uh, play fair. So it doesn't look good for Mr. Trump. OK, it doesn't look good for his family. It doesn't look good for his friends or his attorneys or his acquaintances or his cabinet members when he was president. I will just say this before I get started. And that is, is that um, the guides often tell me and and I think uh, when they're having a little fun, uh, they tell me someone and <laughs> maybe this isn't fun, but they tell me someone is going swimming with the fishes. Now you can discern whatever you think that means, but I think that sometimes has been used as a mob uh, expression. Um, they're telling me, and it's a colloquialism, colloquialism. I don't know what they're talking about, but anyway, perhaps somebody is going to go swimming with the fishes. We'll have to wait and see what that means. So I'm going to get started because of my literally historic electronic snafus I have put your questions in a Word document and I have not even organized them. I just dumped them in there and I'm going to go as fast as I can. I will likely do three videos. This is kind of insane for me to even say the words, but here we are. And I will do them much shorter because I just think they need to be shorter. So if... um if we can get as much done as we can, say in 30 to 45 minutes, and then we'll go on from there, right? Thank you for joining me. Here we go. Bella Luna says, um, the guide spoke of the troubles, and this really made sense as to what the U.S. may go through. If this transpires, when do your guides see this happening and or ending? Um, thank you, Bella Luna. The troubles is what happened in in Ireland, when Northern Ireland, and there was a lot of uprising and unrest and attacks, uh, sort of citizens turned vigilantes or whatever you want to say about it. I don't have an opinion on who was right and who was wrong. I just know that my spirit guides say that the United States, and they've said this for over a year, and I did get confirmation from a high-ranking security person, a national security person, um, that what the United States is concerned about is that, and when I say United States, I mean Biden, the DOJ, that sort of thing, is that we could go through a period of time much like what happened in Northern Ireland, where citizens took it upon themselves to wreak havoc. Um, I'm I'm literally skipping over certain words. You guys are just going to have to read between the lines. Um, so this is still... In our timeline, although I will say to you, thankfully and gratefully, the timeline has not come out to be what it could have been. There, there was a timeline that showed things to be much worse. And I really think that we're going to um, get off with a much better outcome. Now, this is because of Biden. This is because of the DOJ. And everything that he's done, and there's telling me like strong arm, like he had to force things. Uh, he had to, they're telling me he had to force people within certain agencies to play hardball. Okay, so this is not typical. The president doesn't call up ATF or whoever, the FBI, the CIA, the NSA, whoever, and say, look, 
And maybe it wasn't Biden. Maybe it was Kamala Harris or maybe it was someone else. But the administration made it clear that we want these agencies to do a better job. We want to give you the extra resources to do a better job in finding these citizens that may be thinking of doing something that could hurt other citizens or even cause mayhem or that kind of thing, right? So really this is all because of what Biden has strong armed. He's he's really gotten involved in these agencies to the degree that he could. Um, and even if that only means that they called and said, the office of the president would like for you to do this. Okay, make make of that what you want. But when is it going to start? When is it going to end? Well, it's what's happening right now is that um, 45 has decided that the Q people are his army. Okay, so Biden has done such a good job of decentralizing the Proud Boys and those different groups, the militias. Uh, you know, he's really arrested the people in charge and he's he's put a lot of pressure on those people. And so now 45 has turned to this group and um, really the group, the, the messages to the group had all but ceased. And then they picked up pretty suddenly a few months ago and people were wondering why. Well, this is why 45 will be calling on them to do his bidding. Now he has also, and the guides have said this before too, he's also threatened the United States, meaning the DOJ, Biden, whoever, FBI. Um, and he's done this publicly. I mean, 45 has said this publicly, that that uh, if something bad happens to him, uh, cer certain bad things will happen to the United States. So that's a veiled threat. And that's how he's going to do this. And I do see that happening. I do see him directing these people. And, and you know, what the problem here is, is that when you have a group like a militia, there's a leader, there's some sort of loose, even connection to everyone. Well, these Q people are kind of lone rangers and um, activating them is easy. And no, it's like Frankenstein getting loose. We don't know what they're going to do. They're not being directed specifically. They're just being directed to go do something. So how long is this going to last? Well, there's going to be a conflagration, they're saying right now, uh, around the election, which is, you know, obviously the midterms. But also there's going to be a time when several of these groups or entities are going to be working together, not working together, but working at the same time to kind of cause mayhem. So that's this uh, this fall, you guys. Uh, but I do see the Q people being energized. I'll just leave it at energized um, through next year, through summer of next year. Oh, right. So the DOJ will seek to uh, find the Q person. And you guys have all asked me in the past, who is Q? I think it's changed. I think it was Ron, what's his name, Watson or something. I think it changes. I think that um, it's pretty easy to follow the script, okay? And if you can get a message out to a certain people, they'll 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 disseminate that message. So so the guides are saying there isn't a one Q person that this this uh, group has been taken over. Um, the leadership. If you call, if you can call it that, it's very loose. Okay, has been taken over, and I think that probably forty um, fives minions are involved in that. But the DOJ will do what it can to um, to remedy that, to stop that. Um, okay, so now we're going to move on. Thank you for your question, Bella Luna, and Gail K says. Um, 
Gail just says, thank you. Thank you, Gail. I appreciate that. I'm telling you guys, I, my life is really crazy right now. I just dumped all of these into a Word document and here we are. Um, so, um, okay. Now, so Peg Hilliard says, are there political people in our government that have been keeping track of all the exposed or the loopholes that T has exposed or 45 has exposed? Also, are they working on a way to close those uh, loopholes? Yes. Actually, what is happening, because to be honest with you, they just showed me all of the government. <laughs> and I mean, all of the government that would be that would be responsible, normally be responsible for investigating somebody like 45 are all busy. They are literally over their head in work. Um, there isn't anybody else available. Um to investigate these things. So what they just showed me was they have contracted, and I don't know if that's a formal contract or if that's an un informal contract, but they've contracted with some legal scholars in um, institutions and also in universities. You remember, they're showing me that Biden's wife, Jill, is, is a teacher, is a college, you know, she's very fond of tapping into our, colleges our universities and into that mind those minds so they have an informal or a formal contract or maybe they have both with some legal eagles legal uh scholars that are helping them do this so basically they've had to outsource that but that's okay and they are working on it and those legal people actually meet via zoom with our doj to sort of it's like those university and college professors are doing the legwork and then they present the case this is what we think to say someone at the doj and the doj fine tunes it and or takes it as is and runs with it but we've had to outsource that they are working on it thank you for your question that's a great question marie olga says um her question is the political polls they haven't seemed correct going back to the Obama years. What's going on? Uh, contacting wrong, not enough voters are cheating. They may seem to be different from what readers are predicting this time. Yes. Um, well, some you, when you said cheating, the, the guides kind of flashed that at me. So um, that's important, I guess. Uh, there There is some cheating, but I, I wouldn't call it cheating. I, I mean, I would say that they've, they're selecting their source carefully. So I don't know if that's cheating. Um, maybe it is cheating. Yeah, I guess maybe it is cheating because the guides are showing me. So if you say your poll represents likely voters between the ages of 18 and 75, but yet you're only calling likely voters in red cities, then that is mis, um, you're misrepresenting, you're cheating. So yeah, you're right. So that's why the guides pointed that out to me. Um, also the guides want to talk about, I don't know why this is important. I'll tell you guys, you guys figure it out. Uh, remember back in the Obama years when the government started offering cell phones to people that couldn't afford cell phones because they deemed it a necessity to have a phone. So, um, I know that the, some of these people that get these government phones, you know, I mean, look how often we drop our phones and they crack and we have to get a new phone. But when you get a government phone, I think you get a new number. Um, I don't know. They're just telling me that that it's hard to track. The guide said this in that one video when they said, first of all, if these pollsters are calling landlines, that's crazy. Number two, I happen to have my same cell phone number that I've had for quite a while, but I know a lot of people uh, change their cell phone numbers. And I don't know if that's a specific type of reason, like they they're getting these government phones or whatever. It's just much harder to get a hold of people. What the guides had said was in the previous video, they have to do it in person. They literally said, if you want a poll, you can believe, then you've got to send people out in person, and not only to, you know, the grocery stores, right? Because Gen Z doesn't even shop at, a, at grocery stores, right? So you're going to miss all the 18 to 25 year olds. Um, so you need to go to universities. You need to go to workplaces. You need to go to even go to clubs. 
you know, uh, sporting events. So, so that's why our polls are all wrong. Um, our, our whole society's changed. We're not answering landlines. We're not answering cell phones. Barely people barely answer text these days. And so the only people answering those calls and those emails and those texts are typically older people. And sometimes that means more Republican. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, Okay, great. Thank you for your question. And Mims says, hi, Susan. Thanks for checking our questions. Thank you, Mims. Uh, wondering about the people in the GOP positions who continue to throw spanners in the works of democracy. So many in lower government positions, starting right down at the school board levels and up to the upper levels. Um, she mentions Rick Scott, Abbott, governor of Texas, um, and wants to know, they're, they're white supremacists. Um, this is a long question, dear. I need short questions if you want me to answer them. I know that you guys uh, want to explain your question, but I can't read like four paragraphs. I'm so sorry. Um, I guess I'm going to, I can't even read all this. So um, will at least the linchpin sorts of people be removed? Yes. Okay. Right. The linchpin sorts of people are going to be removed, but that is not our problem. Um, I mean, the, our, our problem is local because this vehement, this hatred, this racism, this otherness is all brewing locally. And you can get rid of all those governors and all those senators, but the local people will just put them back in office, put another version of them back in office. And this attack on our schools, attack on our public schools, a uh, book banning, um, this is all helping them create a very narrow focused community and a narrowly focused society, one that doesn't believe that there's racism, one that doesn't believe that um, that minorities should get a little help here and there because They've been, you know, redlined and every other thing, right? So um, it starts locally, guys. We have a lot of work to do. We are going to get rid of Trump. We are going to get rid of DeSantis. We are going to get rid of some of these Supreme Courts, justices. Um, Eileen Cannon might even go bye-bye. But what is what is the cause, right? Let's get down to the cause of the problem. The cause of the problem in my opinion, the guide's opinion is racism, is this otherness, is that um, somebody else is getting something that I'm not. Um, so we we need to tackle it at that level. And that's that's what we're going to be doing next. And, and we will tackle it because these kids, uh, these 18 to 30 year old kids are going to be our hope for the future. They don't see the majority of them. Now, of course, there's always a few, but the majority of them don't see race. They don't see it as a problem. They're just not racist. Um, so these kids are going to come in and start changing things. And the guides have been saying that uh, they're certainly going to change this election, starting with this election. This is where we're all going to wake up and go, holy moly, who are these people and where did they come from? I've talked about this a lot, guys. They came from they got off of their game. You know, they got off of their second job. They left their class early to go vote. Okay. Th these are the people nobody's talking to. Nobody's polling, but they will be the kids. They will be the people that change our society forever. Okay. So that's kind of where it's going to come from. Thank you for your question. BJ Helder says, um, if 45 doesn't, does not like the outcome of the special master. Will he appeal to the Supreme court? And will they rule in his favor? Well, I think this question was before it went to the um, 11th appeals. Um, will he, will he, will 45 appeal to the Supreme court? Um, I, they're telling me he can't. I don't know why they're saying he can't. I don't understand the reason he either can't or won't. So he may be denied. The Supreme Court may deny to hear it. Honestly, hopefully he's in leg irons by then, right? Um, I guess if he was, if he was right, right, right. So 
I mean, if he was, um, if he was an inmate, quote unquote, he could still, you know, obviously appeal to the Supreme Court. But I still think there's outside pressure on him. I, I don't think, I don't think he's going to appeal to the Supreme Court because there are other charges coming at him fast and furious, and he's going to need to be making plea deals. And of course, this is going to be one of those uh, things that, that that's, this is something valuable he has. I won't, you know, push this up to the Supreme Court if you uh, allow me to X, Y, Z, but I don't see him doing it. I just don't for various reasons, but thank you for your question. It's a good question. Ton says, my question is, will the migrant trafficking debacle in DeSantis and Abbott's careers holding public office? Um, I don't know what you guys know or don't know. Um, I don't even know how these things happen. Um, so there were some, some people that had applied for asylum. They had actually applied for asylum and gotten asylum. They were in Texas. And this person called per, Perlo, Perla Perla um, showed up and said, hey, we have some opportunities for you. We'll put you on a plane and we'll send you, you know, to the East Coast and you can have housing. Made a lot of promises to these people. What well, turns out the DeSantis uh, funded that from Florida, funded somebody coming to Texas and sending people that already had applied for asylum. So it's a lot of le legal problems here. Um, and, and yes, the um, Abbott's reign of terror is what they're saying. Abbott's reign, because that's not something I typically say. Abbott's reign of terror is going to be coming to an end. Um, I do see Beto taking office. I, I just want to tell you, he's beaten and battered. I mean, he's beaten and battered. He's been through quite a, a lot physically and energetically. But I do see Beto taking over governorship of Texas. And at this point, anyway, I mean, look, it's uh, September. Um, and DeSantis, I've always said to you guys, I see DeSantis going down either before the election or right after the election. He's got problems related to money and washing machines. And I'll let you just figure that out for yourself. Uh, but it's coming. His day is coming. Also, he's they're showing me he's still connected to gate to Gates. He's still connected to Matt Gates in a weird way. Um, it's like he uh, these other people bring him down. His associations with other people bring DeSantis down. So, uh, yeah, they're going to be going down. And then, like I said, we got to get back into the local communities and start working really hard to find more centrist Republicans and or really turn people into Democrats, one or the other. Um, OK, so uh, let's see. OK, so this is a great question by A. Your name is A. That's cool. Um, they want to know what's going on in Iran. Uh, women being targeted and abused by moral police praying for their safety. Well, what 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 happened was the moral police, which have always targeted women in Iran, this isn't new. Uh, maybe there's an uptick in a, attacks or an uptick in activity, but that caused some Iranian women to burn their headscarves. And then men surrounded the women to protect them from the police. So we have um, we have women and, and men standing up for women's rights in Iran and against that religious uh, restriction. And, and again, this is much like what the guides have been saying. They talked about an Arab spring. Do you remember when we had the Arab spring? Well, they're talking about a world spring where people everywhere are waking up and saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're not going to take this anymore. And I've seen this happening in almost every country and every continent. So you're going to see this around the world. Um, and and yes, pray for all of these people that, that are just standing up for their own autonomy, for their own agency. Um, but it's going to start happening. This is the beginning. Now, these things happen like in waves, right? So you have a, um, an, an event, you have a series of protests or events, and then there might be a lull. 
And then, and that law might be a year. It might be three years. And then the events happen again. It's not going away. It's going to continue happening. Look at the civil rights in the United States in the 60s. And here we are sort of redoing that again a little bit, or we're going to be redoing that again here. So it does kind of continue to come back until you learn your lesson. These are lessons. Um, thank you for your question. Um, K Kentucky Peggy in stitches maybe, or KY Peggy in stitches says, um, question is, with the recent filing against the former guy, 45, by a prior rape victim, will be successful? Will other victims join in and go after him? The guides have, have often said that E. Jean Carroll was going to be one of the people to take him down. And she now has a new law that they passed in New York that allows her to actually go after him civilly, I think, um, in a new way. And she's going. Her, her attorneys have already filed so, so she is going to do that. Um, and I don't know if you mean the recent filing. I don't know if that's E. Jean Carroll or if that's another person. Um, will other victims join in and go after him? I do think so. Yes. With this, I can see other people. I can see other people joining him. There's a dark haired lady who's got caramel brown hair. That's, her hair is beautiful. Anyway, it's down to her shoulders. Anyway, there's other people. Yes, thank you for your question. I mean, it's a, they're showing me a pile on, right? Like um, there's going to be so many people and entities going after him. Um, the AG in New York just went after him. And I think she recommended or referred it to the IRS. The guides have been talking about the IRS with Trump for a long time. It's a pile on. He's going to have so many charges from different agencies. I just, uh, what I want to know as I look at that is will the DOJ, you know, sometimes you have all these state agencies that, that in, have indictments against someone. And then the DOJ or the FBI steps in and says, no, he's mine, right? That's what I want to see is will the DOJ say, yes, you can have him after we're done with him, right? But he, it's over, game over. His whole family is over. His business is over. Um, when I say his family is over, I mean, they're destitute. I mean, um, there has been, they're going to go, um, Somebody is going to go. It could be Eric. Eric or Trump is going to go to one of the, uh, well, they tried to go to Croatia, but I don't, I don't think even Croatia will have them. I think they're going to go to one of the Stan, you know, Tajikistan, uh, one of the Stan countries. Um, and one of the Stan countries just announced that it's going to, move from this kind of dictatorship to more of a liberal uh, democracy. So um, that's great. That's a great, that's when money pours in, right? That's when they start opening up hotels and, and tourism. So I feel like the boys are going to try to, to they're, you're not going to hear about them here in the United States. They're going to be over there making their money over there. Um, but as far as like his name, his business here in the United States, it's a goner. It's over. Um, I hope that answers your question. Thank you so much. My Secret Garden says, um, thank you so much, My Secret Garden. Oh, just another thank you. Well, thank you, My Secret Garden. I appreciate it. Allie Fitzpatrick. Hey, Allie says, um, will Abbott and DeSantis be prosecuted for what they have done to the asylum seekers? Um, I don't think... Right. So I have to separate Abbott. I don't think is going to be prosecuted because I think that he has tiptoed through those law statures. And I don't think there's anything we can pin on him. Um, now, DeSantis having if they can link Perla, who's the woman who went to Texas and promised all these things, if they can link her to DeSantis through money. Which they just told me they can. Um, then DeSantis is going to be going down for that. Yes. 
uh, he he could be charged for that. Now, unfortunately, as I look into that energy, Floridians, uh, Republican Floridians think that that's a bunch of hooey that he shouldn't be charged. It doesn't, it's not a big enough crime for them to feel like he's done something wrong. Now we know these people are not, you know, right in their heads, uh, but um, that's it. Like, I think that's why I, the guides always say, the DOJ is looking for hard crimes, hard crimes, not not some petty thing, not even a, a regular crime. They're looking for big crimes, big, big, big crimes, because that's what it's going to take to sort of take these people, take their power away, take their power base away. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Thank you so much. OK, Ruthie H says, um, the more trouble 45 gets into, the harder it is for you to understand how people voted for him. That said, what do the guides feel about what's going to happen to his followers? Well, I think that um, some of that has already started to happen. Uh, you don't see the Trump flags. You don't see the Trump convoys with the flags. Uh, you don't see so many Trump hats or T-shirts or even stickers I'm in Texas. So, I mean, I think I'm a pretty good bellwether of, of how these people are. And I, I think that his supporters now feel like he has too much baggage. Um, it's inevitable to them as well. They can see that he's going to be charged with some pretty heavy charges. So I think I just, they're telling me a poll, which who do we believe polls, but a poll did come out that said, DeSantis was finally above Trump with Republicans. So I think they are sort of melting away from him a little bit. Now, the Q people cult not thinking at all clearly, they still may be motivated by him. But I think these people are going to sort of slink off, is what the guides say. Um, what can we do to help uh, them? Uh, what can we do to help? Um, she says, I get the feeling that there are millions of people standing on the edge of a cliff wanting to jump off because they were duped. Uh, yeah, I think that's very possible. Um, we can be compassionate. She says, what, what can we do to help? Well, you know, we can be compassionate to them. Um, and the guides have talked about this in the past too. Um, not to try, try not to say, what were you thinking? Look how much damage your vote has done to America or look at how much damage your vote and your support of this person has done to these people. Um, we, we have to be compassionate because for America to go forward, we're all in a boat together. And if we're only rowing on the left side of the boat, we're gonna go in circles. So we need those people on the right side we need the counterbalance so that we stay sort of down the middle, whether it's left of the middle or right of the middle is fine. But when one side is, is completely in control, it just doesn't work, right? So um, we just need to be compassionate to them. So that's kind of what the guides are saying. Thank you for your question. Uh, John Mikowski says, um, do I feel that the 11th District Court of Appeals will rule? Uh, we already got that answered. I'm sorry that I've been late to this video. As I mentioned, I had a lot of electronic snafus going on over here. Uh, your other question is what? Um, yeah, so both of your questions have been answered by now, I think. Uh, thank you, John. Um because the other question was, will the will the um, will the special master allow the DOJ to go on with their investigations? Uh, well, I guess it hasn't been answered. Um, I'm take that back. I'm sorry. The guides are reminding me. Uh, they have until uh, one date is September 30th, and the other date is in October. Um, I I don't the the DOJ is going to be able to go on with their investigations. I don't see uh, 45 being able to successfully convince the special master, that these hundred top secret documents are Trump's personal property or that he declassified them using his mind. So that's the answer. Yeah, I don't, sorry about that. Thank you for your question. 
Darren says, thank you for your question, Darren. A uh, Russian question with P annexing a lot more Ukraine territory, threatening nuclear war, mobilizing more troops, what will happen next? Um, it's over. It's uh, P. This is th this is the last gasp of a man that's losing power. Um, he he. Uh, so if you guys know, he's mobilizing more people, not troops. He's he's actually now drafting people out of universities. Um, he's drafting everybody. I mean, anybody and everybody. Um, and it's and it's a huge amount, like I think maybe uh, over 100,000 uh, people that he wants to mobilize and send to the front lines. OK, these aren't soldiers. They're not trained. He's going to put them on the front lines. I'm sorry to say they're going to be fodder. Uh, the Ukrainians are trained. They've got really good um, artillery and equipment uh, and, and they have something that wins wars. And that is heart. They truly have the heart and soul, and um, they're going to win. The, the Ukrainians are going to push Russia out of the boundaries, and the guides have always said this. Um, and the guides actually said that Ukraine was actually going to get Crimea back, but they said that that was a five-year timeline. And I say now, looking at it with the guides, the, the timeline is really so much better. They may get Crimea back within uh, two years, two to three years. Um, now, I will say, you know, everybody is saying Putin is sick, Putin is sick. I, I do think that they are, I'm going to be very careful here. I do think that there are some people within his circle that are probably helping him be unhealthy. Um, and I do see that man moving on. Okay, I do see that. But I also see, and this story hasn't changed, this uh, timeline that they're showing me has not changed yet. I see actually a general taking over because there's going to be mayhem in the streets. If, you're, if you have someone walking into a, a university and pulling a young man out of class and saying, go stand in that line, we're going to send you to the front lines. Okay, that's... That's that's where this is all going to get gummed up. They had been um, offering soldiers, they were, had been offering male citizens a certain payment to join up. And they were going to those far flung out, outer territories in their country where they didn't even have running water. Some of the soldiers were taking pictures and stealing the toilets in Ukraine. Now, getting those people to go fight is one thing. Getting a, an urban Moscovite to go fight is another thing. Okay, so when you start when you start bringing these kids in, their families are going to fight back. Uh, it, it, this is a no go. This is this is why the general has to be brought in because all of a sudden there's extreme instability in the streets. Um, there's protest. And and they have to quell that, and they will do that with a hardline general, and they will do that with tanks. They will have um, it. It will be a military junta, a lockdown. Now after that, that lasts about three years, and then I see that country becoming a socialist democratic country. So that's the timeline I see, and that's kind of what I see happening. I don't see now, of course, they could hit the, the nuclear button. Um, I don't it's not going to happen because um, whether you believe in them or not, there there are other entities, other space beings, and, and they cannot allow us to blow up our planet because it would shockwave through the universe and cause major problems for other galaxies. So we're not allowed to do that, okay? And you can go back and look in history in the different times when the nuclear button was about to be pushed or pushed and there was interference that's pretty well documented. As a matter of fact, right now, that's documented that there's a lot of UFOs being seen over Ukraine right now. Um, that's also very documented around that nuclear reactor. So um, 
it, that's not going to happen. This is all a cluster flock uh, for uh, Russia and um, it's a big mess, but it's not going to impact Ukraine and it's not going to, it's not going to impact anybody else. Now, of course, Ukraine is still struggling. They're still fighting and there's still atrocities happening there. However, they've made huge gains and they will continue to make those gains. So that's what I see with that. Hopefully that makes sense for you. I'm minding the timer because again, I don't want to, I really don't want this to go on forever and ever. Um, I'd rather make three smaller videos. You guys let me know what you think. All right, just passing through, ask. If we send white light to those people who are truly awful, 45 DeSantis, Abbott, does that affect their karma? Does it help them get in touch with their spirit guides? Um, that's such a great question, just passing through. Thank you so much. Um, they're talking about sending white light to them through an intermediary. I, I don't think it's a good idea for us to connect with these entities directly. You're really putting yourself at an energetic risk that's unnecessary. So what I would suggest that you do is send white light through, uh, pick an angel, pick an archangel, ask Gabriel, um, at, you know, ask Gabriel, Archangel Michael, or even Jesus to accept this love and light and please direct it where it's needed, right? So another way to do this is to uh, all of us direct this love and light to an entity and, and just say, apply where needed, right? We don't really know what's needed. We don't have that kind of knowledge or sight. So why not just allow them to uh, put it where it's needed? Um, that's what I would say about that. Thank you so much. And if the sound has changed, I had to close the door. So it's, it might be a little bit more echoey in here. And I'm, I apologize for that. All right. Lisa Svensson says, um, with insufficient access to fuel, how will UK and European survive in the coming winter? I am so sorry, you guys. I mean, you guys are really paying the price and you're stepping up and supporting Ukraine by, um, by, taken the hit, you know, by not having, um, heating oil or, um, access to this fuel. What I see is warming centers. I see, um, older people going to warming centers. So maybe the community creates a, yeah, they, they may even create shelters. I, I just, I was going, I was describing what I was seeing and I saw a, uh, like a community center of some sort or some sort of building that would be your governmental building and that building getting heat and people being able to go there and spend the day there or several hours there. But then they showed me the nights and how, you know, really some of these people need to be warm at night. Um, so I think there will be shelters. I think that you guys will uh, create heated shelters. They may be tents that are heated, um, but that's that's what I see. Um, the government will help you guys as much as they can. Um, I mean, and you asked European and UK, and, you know, every government's going to do it differently. But I, I don't even know that giving you subsidies for fuel would work because I'm not sure you can get the fuel. That's the problem, right? So I think that um, creating a place where you can have a lot of people would be um, a better use of that fuel and that money. But that's, that's kind of what I see. Um, hopefully you guys, hopefully it's not that bad. And, and, you know, we can always hope for a mild winter. I'm seeing a place that's got wet snow. I mean, that's never good. Um, but I don't know where that is. I think it's it might be in Poland. I see the UK getting by. I mean, look, it's not going to be fun. It's not going to be. Um, it's it. What it's going to do is it's going to put a lot of pressure on that conservative government to start 
working on climate change and to start working on being more energy dependent. So uh, perhaps more solar or wind or different things like that. So um, it's going to put a lot of pressure. I, I mean, I see the UK really getting squeezed in the next couple of years. Again, back to what we were talking about earlier with the Arab Spring, with this idea of a world spring where people stand up and say, no, just no, we're not going to put up with your excuses and we're not going to keep giving you chance after chance after chance. We want you to do something. So you're going to really see uh, some real pressure against them. And that and that's good because it's time, right? Thank you so much. Jewel of the Tarot says, um, my guide said Deary wouldn't come through for the DOJ unless I got that wrong. Um, but now that he said to Trump's lawyers that they need to show proof of declassification, will Garland move forward with the DOJ's investigation. Um, okay, guys, I know these questions there. I know they have to be long, but I can't, they, I can't read them that are really long. What, and I asked my guides that too, right? Like, so what, th what they said was Eileen Cannon was going, judge Cannon was going to be, you know, gone around, removed, whatever in trouble, not, she wasn't going to get her way. And then they said another man with her would also have trouble. Okay. Um, now, I don't know what they mean by that. That's kind of all they said, that he would also be connected. Another man that would be connected to her would also have trouble. Um, we'll see what happens. I don't know. Perhaps he changed his mind. Um, your question, uh, will he allow Garland to move forward to DOJ's investigation? Yes, uh, he will. I, I said this earlier. I don't see him uh, refusing those hundred documents. Now, he may do something that lets us down, uh, but the most important things, he allows the DOJ to continue their um investigation or in continue seeing and looking at those documents. Uh, thank you for your question, Jewel. Um, Critter Sanctuary, I think this is the last one, and then I'll go on to part two, says um, the migrant stunt looks like it's going to backfire on, on DeSatan, DeSantis, and Abbott. Will they personally face charges? I've already answered that question, I think. Um, thank you for your question, though. I appreciate it. Moxie Cha Cha says, uh, many blessings. Thank you. Uh, international question. Will the current protests in Iran topple the regime, which could result in various terrorist organizations supported by Iran to diminish? It's not going to topple the regime. It's an irritation to them right now, but it is an important, um, an important thing that is happening, and they should not take it lightly. The um, administration, the government should not take this lightly. This is not um, going to go away. Did 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 women in, in Saudi Arabia get the right to drive? Didn't they eventually get the right to drive? This is kind of what I'm seeing. What they might, what Iran might do is capitulate on one thing. as sort of as a, an appeasement. So I think they might appease these women with one small thing. And when you've been repressed like this, one small thing is a big thing. So I think that in this way, they'll buy more time. And I don't think this is going to be enough to topple the government. But it is a step. And there will be more steps. And that government will be challenged many more times. Um, okay, this is the last one. Robin E says, was TFG and his lawyer set up to ask for the special master? Tucker Carlson talked about it prior to him requesting one, and apparently Judge Cannon had also mentioned it before the trial. The GOP or maybe the Federalist Society set him up for failure. Uh, things are not moving as smoothly as he had hoped. I don't think they set him up for failure. I think they thought that the 11th District Court would rule in favor of Eileen Cannon. And I think that they, th they thought that Deary wouldn't rule in favor of Eileen Cannon and Trump. So, so this is what the guide said a previous video, and this, this makes sense now to me. They said that 
some of these Federalist Society judges would be toppled, uh, would be removed, would be censured, would have ethics complaints, whatever. Okay, they're, they're going to be challenged and or possibly removed. When you do that, to and let's let's be honest, uh, maybe even Kavanaugh, uh, Thomas, right? When you do that to a couple of Supreme Court justices, and then you also do that to a, a few other district or other judges, all those other judges are going to start minding their P's and Q's. And that's what happened here. They got the message that all of Trump's lawyers and Trump's lawyers, lawyers are all now being investigated. It's the same thing with the judges. If you throw your lot in with this group, something bad is likely to happen to you based on a lot of evidence. So these judges on the 11th uh, district court and also Deary now get it. They understand that if they throw their lot in with Trump, they're going to likely face similar situations that Trump's lawyers are. So now you see a chilling effect. You see these judges saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me just mind the letter of the law here because I don't want any trouble. It's better to live and fight another day. So in this case, what they're telling me is the Federalist Society did in a way set Trump up in the sense that the Federalist Society told them, yes, I we would rather have you on the bench so that you can make rulings in the future in our favor than have you go down for this. So yes, I do think you're right in that sense of, um, of what you said at the end, or maybe the Federalist Society set him up for failure. It's not that they set him up for failure, it's that they're saving their own bacon. That's the difference, right? So listen, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I hope things are going well in your life. Listen, it's all over um, for these people. Um, they're all going down. The only thing that we have on our plate right now is to energize ourselves for the midterms, to help those local uh, people that are running help your statewide people that are running. If you got a few bucks, send them a few bucks, put a sticker on your car or make some phone calls for them. Think about becoming a poll watcher. Um, I know in my little community or my, maybe it's my County, they actually are hiring people to block walk and they're paying them $25 an hour and it's a full-time job. So look, this is the kind, and I'm in Redville, right? This is, and this is Democrats. This is our Democrat group. This is the kind of surge that's happening that the media doesn't know about. The media is not paying any attention to. And frankly, we don't want them to because we know that the Republicans outspend us so much. We want to do this a little bit on the down low, right? But that's where you can get involved and where you can help even if it's just sending prayers and white light, definitely think about using an intermediary. Do not get tangled up with these dark energies. They are darker and bigger than anything you want to handle or bring into your own psyche or energy. Okay. So take really good care. Thank you again for joining me. Be stay tuned for part three. Uh, part two is next and maybe even a part three. We'll talk soon. Take care. For entertainment purposes only.